All right, going to do a video refuting the Calvinistic eisegesis twisting of Proverbs chapter 21, verse 1. This is a common scripture they like using to prove that there's no free will and that essentially when they mean God is sovereign, they mean that he basically is totally control everything and that there's no free will, which is not true. Okay, the word sovereign, not only does it not appear anywhere in scripture, but God is sovereign in the sense of he rules, but he's not this, this thing where everyone's a robot. Because the way that Calvinists portray God is some kind of basically like a mad scientist and you're basically his robot or like his Frankenstein monster or whatever. And that, that's not like a derogatory thing. That's actually accurately how Calvinism, historic Calvinism portrays God. You're just basically a robot. That's all that you are. So they're like twisting the scripture to prove that there's no free will. Okay, let's actually look at the verse. Proverbs chapter 21 verse 1 says, The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. And they take this one scripture and insert their own theology into the text, okay? This is saying, basically, the, 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 the way they put it is that, essentially, they use it to say everything that happens is God's will. That's not all what the text says, okay? God does not sovereignly control all the political elections or whoever gets in power, like the Calvinist would twist his verse to say. Okay, Hosea chapter 8, verse 4. They have set up kings, but not by me. They have made princes, and I knew it not. Of the silver, of their silver and their gold, have they made them idols that they may be cut off? You know. So if Calvinism was, if their eisegesis of this verse was true, what do you do with this? You know, Hosea eight four. They have set up kings, but not by me. Proves the thing of free will. Okay, God does not sovereignly control everything a king or ruler does. 1 Samuel 15, 11, It repenteth me that I have set up Saul to be king, for he has turned back from following me, and hath not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel, and he cried unto the Lord all night. 1 Samuel 15, 35, And Samuel came no more to see Saul until the day of his death. Nevertheless, Samuel mourned for Saul, and the Lord repented that he had made Saul king over Israel. Okay, so what they do is they'll take this one verse, but like, what do you do with these other verses that contradict your eisegesis, okay? The, the scriptures don't contradict, it just, it contradicts your eisegesis if you're a Calvinist. And what is eisegesis? Well, it's where you basically enforce, you basically insert your own theology into a verse when it's nowhere found anywhere in the text. And you'll take this one verse out of context, this one verse out of context and ignore other scriptures because Calvinists will, see, like what Calvinists do is they have a select few verses they build, they build their whole theology on, and they will not look at context, nor will they compare and cross-reference scripture. Okay, Proverbs twenty-one verse one is simply saying that God can move the move and turn the heart of the king and to do His will. He has that ability. That's what the text is saying when you compare it with scripture. Okay, when you have this one verse, you can easily make it say, well, you know, it basically has Calvinist doctrine in it. But when you compare scripture with scripture, you see that it's saying that God has that ability. It's not saying that it always happens that way. It's just saying God has that ability. How do we know that? Well, the example of this is when God uses wicked rulers to execute judgment. The example I like to give is the fact that Nebuchadnezzar was a wicked ruler before he turned to God, yet God calls Nebuchadnezzar, quote, my servant, unquote, in Jeremiah 25, verse 9, Jeremiah 27, verse 6, and Jeremiah 43, verse 10. Okay? He can make a ruler do his will. Okay? When comparing scripture with scripture, it's clear that Proverbs 21, verse 1 is teaching that God has the ability to turn the heart of the king to do his will. There's no Calvinist doctrine in this verse whatsoever. Okay, It's another example of Calvinistic eisegesis inserting their own heresy into a verse and not looking at the context or comparing scripture with scripture. So just another example of that. So this is the Calvinistic eisegesis of Proverbs 21, verse 1, scripturally refuted by just comparing verses with verses, comparing scripture with scripture, not taking verses out of context and building our, whole, our own theology off that. So, anyway, don't be deceived by Calvinism. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.